ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope everybody's doing good today. So it is a lot going on currently in the music industry. And I am here to break all of this down, okay? So grab your teacups because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. So it's no secret that the music industry has undergone massive transformation, especially in this digital age, with the rise of streaming platforms, illegal downloads, piracy, record sales in the fucking toilet, okay? But we need to examine what is going on with the industry currently. So earlier today, I had posted something on Discord basically showing you guys that the record industry, the music industry, whatever you want to call it, is officially dying. The billboard is now collaborating with TikTok. And then YouTube has officially rolled out YouTube creator music. And I will break that down for everybody further on in the video. But let's go ahead and just kind of go back to what is going on with the music industry right now in 2023, okay? So right now, the music industry is definitely struggling and C-19 did not help. It really disrupted the industry really bad. Right now, we have streaming wars. And with these streaming wars, we have the music labels and we have the artists and they're fighting over compensation. The streaming revolution was promised as an access to a vast variety of music, but it also became a double-edged sword because while streaming platforms have seen exponential growth like Spotify, Apple Music, and others, many artists are left with basically really low payouts and the imbalance between the labels versus the people who are actually creating the music has really intensified, especially being that this economy is bad. So a lot of musicians right now are really struggling, especially indie artists. And this is why, you know, when all the drama was going on with Spotify, and bless Spotify, because they, they treated me very well, and I love their platform. They're a lot more freer than others, you know, who should not be named. But, um... This is why India Ari and many artists were really upset at the fact that Spotify was paying podcasters millions of dollars to podcast. And I'm not saying that podcasting is easy because it's not, but also songwriting is not easy and producing and composing and putting music together is not easy. And one thing that India Ari was saying is if you can pay Joe Rogan and you can pay Meghan Markle and Obama and all these big names millions of dollars to come to Spotify, then why are we as artists getting pennies on the dollar? It's not fair. And now Spotify is seeing, fast forward a year later, they lost a lot of money. I talked about this in my last stream. They lost millions of dollars messing around with Meghan Markle, Obama. They've made money from Joe Rogan. So the Joe Rogan investment, that made sense because he's one of the biggest podcasters in the world. But they did lose a lot of money messing with a lot of these other celebrity podcasts like Kim Kardashian's and others that they put money into, and those podcasts literally went nowhere. So as of now, they've already lost over $330 million just in their second quarter. And so they're having to like revamp and, and restructure things because they paid so much money out to these podcasts only to not get anything. So looking back on it, Neil Young and, you know, Indy Re, they weren't wrong for their feelings. You know, they felt like, how can you pay them so much money and yet the artists on your platform are getting paid pennies. So that's been a major contention for a lot of artists in the industry is that the, the payouts are just not fair um, for them as, as far as compensation goes. Now, talking about payouts, another thing that's affecting the industry is the diminishment of record sales. That traditional revenue model of selling records and CDs has basically vanished. Now, I have been seeing more records and stuff in the store, like at Target and even Walmart. But again, that is a small niche market. A lot of people are not going out their way to buy vinyls and CDs and things like that. Most people are more comfortable with streaming just because it's easier. They don't have to, you know, have all these cases and cases of albums and CDs. 
But one thing I will say that I've learned over the years is that streaming for the consumer is not always good either. Because if you lose access to this vast array of music um, that you've accumulated over the years on these streaming platforms, your music is just gone. If you're not able to log in, if you get kicked out for some reason, you have no access to that. The same thing is going on in the video game industry too, with them putting everything up in the cloud. If you get kicked off of, you know, Xbox Live or just whatever, you can lose access to those libraries. So for me, I'm more of a fan of physical disc. I still have a lot of DVDs, a lot of CDs, a lot of stuff backed up on hard drives and stuff like that. You know, I want my physical copies. I don't want to just depend on streaming because, again, if the Internet goes out, if we're not able to access, you know, that cloud, you lose all of that information. But if you have a backup drive, if you have a physical copy, that's your music for life. So, unfortunately, because a lot of people don't think like that, record sales have definitely diminished. A lot of musicians are not making money off of any of these record sales. Another thing that's big, it's not as big as it used to be, but they're fighting against copyright and piracy, of course. It was really big when we were growing up in, like, the 2000s with LimeWire, BearShare, Kazaa, um, Napster, all that stuff. A lot of those sites were taken down. I mean, there's new sites that have since popped up. But, you know, piracy is always going to be a thing, you know, especially with a lot of the music nowadays not being as good. People don't want to waste their money buying a whole album to only get one or two good songs. They rather maybe pay for one or two good songs and, you know, pirate the entire album to pick and choose what they like. So, yeah, piracy is going to be an ongoing fight forever. Another thing that's affecting the industry, in my personal opinion, is basically oversaturation and competition. Um, the bar for becoming a musician is, child, it's extremely low. Let's keep that real. Especially for becoming a rapper. Like, literally, if you want to be a poppin' female rapper, all you have to do is just talk about your cooch. We just need to know how big it is, how wet it is, how tight it is, you know what I'm saying, how good you can suck peen, and you too can be a rapper. You don't have to be lyrical. Nothing has to rhyme. You can mumble. Um, you can, you know, you can just say anything down. Just ba 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 ski 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 ski. Just say anything, and you know you'll go viral on TikTok. So the bar is just definitely low. And of course, if you're a male rapper, you have to go out for the fuckboy handbook. You have to talk about killing other black men, and you know, impregnating a bunch of women and pimping hoes. You know, the the typical manual for being a rapper. So the bar is super low. Whereas back in the day you know they were gatekeepers you had to you know freestyle you had to know who came before you you had to put in work you had to be lyrical and all of that has gone out the window because this new generation of music listeners they just want to dance to a hot beat they don't really care what the lyrics are saying it needs to be a hot beat and as long as it's a hot beat they don't care and so right now anybody you know can just become a musician we have access now to studio equipment, top studio equipment, and it doesn't cost as much. You don't have to go pay for studio time. You can be your own beat maker. You can be your own producer from the comfort of your mother's basement or your bedroom. So this has led to an oversaturation of, you know, not just hip hop music, but a lot of music um, in general, where anybody now can just be a musician and, and go viral, literally. And so because of this, it's making it increasingly difficult for, you know, genuine artists who really respect the artistry of music, it's hard for them to gain traction and to gain visibility unless they're viral for fuck shit, unless they're viral for acting a fool on social media or fighting or putting all their business out there. It's very hard for the people who just want to make music to get visibility. Another thing that's also affecting the industry is a change in listener behaviors. Um, you know, us as the audience who is absorbing and taking who is engaging in the music, our behaviors have changed as well. Meaning physically, we have a shorter attention span. And also the rise of algorithms have not helped either. And that's the part that's really kind of disturbing with this billboard TikTok merger is that the attention spans are so short now. Back when we were growing up, music, you know, it was like a well-packaged, well-oiled machine. There were hooks. There were good lines. There were things that caught you. You know, the rappers changed their style, their cadence. It's none of that. Everything is monotone. It's quick. It's vulgar. There's nothing that really grabs you as much. There's no hooks. There's no bridges. There's nothing that just ties this together to make it a song. 
back in the day, songs were a minimum, minimum of three minutes. Sometimes if you were lucky, you'd get a five minute song. I mean, I hear songs now that are under two minutes. It's like, this is not even a song. Where's the rest of the song? But again, because of the algorithms and people wanting to put the best parts to fit on TikTok, they're making the song shorter. So it has affected the listening habits of the audience who are engaging with the music. So it's really concerning to see because a lot of this music is not having a real deep connection with these fans. You know, yeah, these songs may be fun to bop to, dance to, you know, twerk to, but they're not having a real meaningful connection. You know, there's no songs that are, like, really touching the soul like that. I mean, there is, but you have to really search for them is what I'm saying. Most of the viral music is not soul-touching. It's not anything that's going to make you really think or cry or ponder. You know what I mean? You have to really search for that type of music. You're not just going to find that, and you're recommended by the algorithm. The algorithm loves to push a lot of low-vibrational, trashy stuff as opposed to a lot of deep, meaningful, soulful tracks. So now, we got to talk about this whole merger. It is going viral all over social media. So if you guys do not know, today is the first day that TikTok and Billboard have decided to unite. The birth of TikTok Billboard's Top 50 chart was birthed today. So this is an unprecedented collaboration, and it has sent ripples throughout the music industry um, TikTok and Billboard are joining forces to introduce the groundbreaking TikTok Billboard Top 50 chart. Um, so basically, this is going to reshape digital media as we know it. The music landscape has undergone a lot of shifts in recent years. And with streaming platforms and social media becoming more and more popular, especially with platforms like TikTok, TikTok is now literally propelling what is hot in the culture. It is not radio anymore. It's not listening to Hot 97 or listening to your local, you know, DJs in your city play the hottest songs. Not everything is being determined by TikTok. You know, what are the kids dancing to? That is how Charlie D'Amelio was able to basically, you know, create her whole brand was from dancing to music on TikTok. And so it just only made sense that this was going to happen. You know, even Beyonce has gotten on the TikTok wave, you know, making dances for her Renaissance album. You saw people doing that dance over and over again. You like so this is a big thing. I mean, let's keep it real. Things like Little Nas X's Old Town Road really emerged and got super popular on TikTok. Fleetwood Mac was able to basically reinvent their career, quote unquote, when dreams went viral because of that guy skateboarding, you know, and then a lot of these challenges are music based. So it's really, you know, at this point, TikTok is going hand in hand with the music industry. But a lot of people are not necessarily feeling this because, you know, while I can see the positive parts of it. Um, helping, you know, boost emerging artists and newer artists or even indie artists. Um, they can gain a hold of getting recognized on the top 50 billboard if enough people get behind their song and create a dance to it. Um, you know, it can definitely help them. But in a way, too, it's really going to depend on what the algorithm chooses to push. Because currently, if you guys don't know, the person who's number one on the billboard right now is Sexy Red. Sexy Red Ski, yee, that song is the number one song right now on TikTok Billboard. And so just about 15 minutes ago, she finally took to Twitter to thank all her fans for giving her number one. And on top of that, number six is Ice Spice's Deli. So again, these girls are getting recognized, maybe not necessarily on the Billboard as of yet, but now that the Billboard has merged with TikTok, they're going to get more eyes on them. And so now they're getting that recognition and a lot of people are not feeling this. So the comments on Twitter are definitely mixed. A lot of people feel like this is just going to create worse music. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys some of these comments. Uh, one person is saying TikTok music is terrible. Somebody else says I blame Nikki and Doja for this. Another person says an easy list of songs that I need to block. Another person says, get ready for more TikToks, I guess. Hashtag Eminem might need to figure out the website now. Another person says, looks like TikTok is becoming the new DJ, spinning the top hits on its own chart and, living, and leaving Billboard feeling ghosted. Somebody else said, this is bad for real music. Another person says, now we will finally know who is carried by TikTok. 
Another person says the end of the music industry already began, but this will finish it. Every single new artist tries to be trendy on TikTok with a three day miracle song. Those songs have no longevity, no deep meaning, nothing. So it is very mixed. Um, some people are really happy that Sexy Red is number one. Other people feel like, you know, again, she's a bad representation. So this whole TikTok merging with Billboard is going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But I see a lot of major mainstream artists now wanting to make their music geared more towards TikTok. Because again, this is these people's bread and butter. So you're going to see a lot more artists doing things like that to make TikTok hits as opposed to more meaningful hits. So now in other news, okay, um, that has to do with music in the industry is that now YouTube has been talking about this for over a year, but today they finally launched the YouTube Creator Music for Everyone. So they sent me an email this morning concerning Creator Music. I had posted this on Discord, so I got an email, and they said, use music worry-free, monetize your content. Creator Music provides a massive library of tracks cleared from your long-form videos, including thousands of free songs and millions of revenue sharing and licensing options. Discover tracks at any budget and set the soundtrack for your channel while being able to monetize your content. Now, let me be very honest about this. Um, I definitely do feel a way. Now, let me bring y'all back to my channel, 2013. This is why I had created Lovely T TV 2013 back in the day. Um, when I had this channel, a lot of people don't know that this channel was demonetized for six months. And the reason why I was demonetized wasn't because I necessarily violated anything or bullied people or did anything crazy. They demonetized my channel because I had used a song called Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. It was a 15-second snippet. It was my opener. So, isn't she lovely? One of my um, fans had made me an uh, intro, and they used that song, and I loved it. And so... One night I went to bed and I woke up and I was hit with about 10 copyright strikes back to back to back for that intro. And they completely demonetized my channel. I tried to reach out to YouTube, wasn't able to get a hold of nobody. I probably had only 100, I don't even think I had 100,000 subscribers at that time, maybe like 50, 60,000. And it was, it was crazy because I was just starting to make a little bit of money on YouTube and my whole channel was demonetized. And um, I had to create a whole new channel. I tried to go to Daily Motion. Nobody followed me over there. So I started all over with my 2013 channel. It wasn't until the white gamers started going off. Remember Angry Joe? It was Angry Joe and a bunch of other white gamers. They ended up getting hit too for using music and video gameplay um, because a lot of these content IDs, the industry was like really trying to go after YouTubers. So then they started going after the gamers saying it's not fair that they're making money playing our games. And so the gamers started getting hit back to back. They were getting demonetized. But again, these were white males. They had huge, you know, followings, you know, million plus subscribers. And I remember Angry Joe went off. What the f YouTube? You guys are being complete f assholes. What the hell happened to you? I cannot believe you're doing this. This is wrong. This is stupid. Why the hell would you punish all of the people who have you who you have profited off of for years? Because a few people are uploading full movies to YouTube or full songs to YouTube. You want to hurt everyone with this stupid ass new content ID system. And YouTube listened to how unfair that was. Like, we're bringing people to your platform. We're bringing y'all traffic and we're getting hit. You know what I'm saying? For 15-second intro songs and, you know, video gameplay. Like, this is nonsense. So then that's when, you know, intermediary um, companies started, like, full screen and machinima. And they were all scams as well. It wasn't until they started ranting and raving that YouTube took it seriously that Content ID was being abused by the industry. So then with no further explanation, no apology, all of a sudden they remonetized my channel, sent me an email saying, hey, your channel's back, remonetized, here goes the money that we were holding on to for months, we let the money go. It was crazy. 
And then they sent me my check that they had been holding for months, which was a few thousand dollars. It was horrible. That was like the worst experience to be demonetized for six months. I mean, at that point, I was still working a full time job. I was doing IT, thank God, you know, that I hadn't just quit my job at that point. But this really bothers me that, you know, now the industry wants to say, hey, creators, come back. We need you now. Because see, what happened is, once they got greedy and started striking people and making it where it wasn't fun to create content, even doing music reviews, you couldn't even do covers for a while. If you sung covers, you were hit up by all these industry, um, you, you were basically hit up with copyright and content ID for even doing covers. I'm back in the day watching some of the most beautiful covers on YouTube. All of them were claimed. And for a long time, people stopped doing covers on YouTube. And funny enough, that's how Justin Bieber got discovered was from doing covers. And then people started getting punished. So then after a while, people said, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck the industry. Fuck the music. We're not going to use y'all's music. We're going to just stick to royalty-free music. And this gave a lot of indie artists a real chance to have their music be showcased on people's YouTube videos. So for the most part, I hired people to sing my intros. Um, you know, I use royalty free tracks for when I do like commentary videos and things like that. And that's what most YouTubers did. We just started using royalty free stuff and just, you know, let the industry fall by the wayside. Well, it's very interesting now that 10 plus years later, now they want to do a collaboration with YouTubers. Now they want us to come back and start licensing their music. Now they're saying, hey, 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 YouTubers, I know we got you guys demonetized years ago and we struck you for doing covers. But now, look, you, you, you can license our music for $1.99, 99 cents, 69 cents. Or if you don't want to pay us right outright, we can just do revenue sharing. So, you know, you can use our clips in your videos. We can share the revenue together. And then, you know, it's a win-win for both of us. Absolutely not. No, keep the same energy, music industry. Um, I refuse to even entertain this. I will stick to supporting my indie artists. You know, when I need a song created, I will pay to get a song created from scratch. I will stick to using my royalty-free music that, you know, pays indie artists their money. I'm not going to entertain this. If I want to listen to a poppin' track, um, I'll watch the video on YouTube that the artist has uploaded on their YouTube channel, or I'll listen to it on Apple Music or on Spotify. I'm, I'm not engaging in this. I'm not doing revenue sharing. I'm not doing upfront licensing. Um, this is a joke. And a lot of people are not reading the fine print. What you guys also need to realize is that at the end of the day, if you do the revenue sharing with these companies, you need to remember that the usage requirements can change at the right of the holder's discretion. For example, after you upload a video and use the revenue sharing track, the rights holder could later disable monetization for that track, which would also disable monetization for your video. Changes to the usage terms can apply in certain territories or all territories. So the devil is always in the details and people need to remember that. Also, a lot of these licenses and license renewals, some of them carry expiration dates. So if it expires, you know, after two years, you have to keep track of that and, you know, renew that license if you continue to wish to get paid on your video. It can be very cumbersome, you know, trying to keep track of this. And then also, you know, keeping up with these licensing changes. Anything can happen in the industry. So for me, this is not worth it because for years, they spit in the face of the regular man and woman on this platform. Um, I remember I was singing a Soul For Real song in my live stream and I got hit with copyright and content ID from literally 15 different entities. They wanted to claim my voice because I was singing a Soul For Real song. I had to go into the video and basically cut out that clip from that live stream of me singing a, a 15 second Soul For Real song. So now you guys want to, you know what I'm saying, share money with me to sing a Soul For Real song? I think not. So this is how you know the music industry is definitely on the decline and it's dying. I feel bad for the artists, though, especially the good artists who really home in on their craft, who really take it seriously, who are really about lyricism, who are really about making music that's going to stand the test of time. I feel bad for them because they're the ones who are getting the short end of the stick because now in order for them to compete, they have to dumb down their content. So that way it's, you know, TikTok friendly. So that way it's it's 
formatted for TikTok, which is short, quick, you know, not any, which is short, quick tracks that aren't really meaningful, you know, so the industry is changing and it's just really sad, um, you know, and I understand why artists like Russ go off and why, you know, they get upset. You know, he's probably one of the best ones that we know who's indie and who, you know, makes good money selling his own music. And that's the thing. The industry doesn't want that. They don't want these artists to be a Rust. They want these artists to, you know, be part of Atlantic and be part of BMG, and Universal Music Group, and all of these conglomerates because they get a check. But the thing is, it's sad because even from Cardi B's most recent video, Bongos, like I talked about in my live stream, it's obvious Atlantic is not even helping these girls with these videos. You know, they're spending $2 million of their own money on these videos and they're covered with adverts. There was so much advertising in that video. That's sad. That should be the label's job to pay for music videos. Like Kay Michelle said back in the day, if I'm, if I'm having to put up money for my music videos, promo and everything else, what is the point of being signed to a label? A lot of these labels are not doing their job, but yet and still, they want the money. And I just feel like the old system, it, it's falling slowly by the wayside. That's why they're doing all these new tricks to collaborate with YouTubers and collaborate with TikTokers. But for me personally, as somebody who was very much affected by this, and it's still traumatic for me to this day. I don't care if this happened in 2013, but I was demonetized for, for six straight months for something I did not do. I violated no laws, you know, and so that's why now I'm very careful. I don't play around with the music industry because they will demonetize and do little shady shit to your channel, and I, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be bothered with their licensing and all their complexes and, you know, the pricing and stuff like that. If I want to support these artists, I'll support them outright by streaming their music or, you know, uh, watching their videos because they get revenue from, you know, their YouTube channels and stuff like that. I'll support them that way. I don't trust putting their music in my videos and then having it affect my content further on down the line. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this industry breakdown of what is going on right now in the music industry. I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on all of this stuff going on. How do you guys feel about this? How do you guys feel about Billboard now collaborating with TikTok? Do you feel like this is a positive or do you feel like this is going to make music worse? And then how do you feel about now the industry wanting to work with YouTubers and content creators, you know, in this revenue split, in this, you know, um, upfront licensing deal that they're trying to do with us after years of them claiming our voices, making it what we couldn't do covers, demonetizing our channels and everything else. How do y'all feel about this new creator music licensing initiative that they've rolled out? So I'd love to hear from you guys. I want to read your comments down below. Make sure you guys like this video. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to y'all later. Enjoy the rest of your day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.